Please welcome Steve Rosen. Thank you, Lorella, and good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, when I first looked at uh, this 25 years of sales, uh, I have been around, and I've been solely focused, truly for the last 25 years, in the area of sales. I've carried the bag. In fact, I've won awards as a sales rep. I've been a regional sales manager and managed a team of eight or 10 salespeople. I've become a national sales manager. And then a bum, which you know is a business unit manager, and a vice president of sales. But for the last 12 years, it's been very gratifying to do what I do, because I work with sales leaders and help them achieve performance, help them achieve their goals, and help them get better at their trade. So that has been the most gratifying chapter. Uh, sharing this information with you today, I think, is uh, another part of what I enjoy doing. Um, and you know, Lorella mentioned I'm passionate about performance. What I'm really passionate about is performance through people because people make a difference in your sales organization. So let me ask, I'm gonna ask you guys to, uh, to uh, have a show of hands throughout. And the, the name to my, uh, my talk has changed several times, but really at the end of the day, what it is about is the key to unlocking performance in your sales organization. How many here feel that your sales organization is the key driver for growth in your company? Okay, majority of you. How many of you feel that your sales force is operating at 100% of potential? Meaning every sales rep is operating at a high level, they're making things happen, they're working extremely hard, they're engaging customers. How many of you who put up your hand saying your sales force is key to driving growth would say that your sales force is operating at 100%? Wow, I thought there'd be more. <laughs> okay, you guys are being honest. How many say their sales force is operating about 60%, there's some really good people, uh, but not everybody is where they need to be. Show of hands. Okay. So the question I have is what if? What if you can improve the potential of where your sales force operates? What's the possible impact on sales? Could it be 10%? Could it be 20%? And really what I'm looking for in organizations I work with is creating breakthrough performance. Not just improving performance, but creating breakthroughs. And guess what? Today, over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to share with you, not only based on my 25 years of experience, but based on research I've done uh, through industry studies in this area as to what the key to driving performance really is. And my colleagues, we, we have some similarities that flow through our presentations. But at the end of the day, I really believe it's, it's the couple factors we're going to talk about. But I think it's important at first, because sometimes I even get confused when we talk about the difference between performance and results, okay? Are they the same? I don't think so. You don't think so, okay. So let me define for purposes of today. You know, the expectation, Peter, is when we have great performance, our anticipation is we're gonna have great results. And in most cases that happens, right? But sometimes it doesn't. And here's the key difference, because when we look at lagging and leading indicators that Tibor talked about, what performance really is, is an output. It's controllable by your salespeople, and it's really the quantity and quality of, uh, of effort that your sales reps put into activities. Okay? Results is a measurement. It's an outcome. The results happen. You can't change anything once you're at results. You can change the output. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So when I talk about performance, I'm not talking about results. I'm talking about getting your salespeople to work at a much higher level of quality, quantity of their effort and activities they put in. So if we're looking for breakthrough performance, and there's been lots of great suggestions, and I think they're all important, how many of you here are doing one or more of the following key initiatives, whether it be selling through social media, Improving sales processes, sales training, integrating sales and marketing, which is a, a big one now, or using new apps or new sales technology. How many people are doing one or more of those uh, activities? Wow, okay, so it's pretty much across the board. How many of you expect to have breakthrough performance from any one of these key activities? Okay, so, exp oh, okay. so it, in my mind, these are all great enhancers or enablers of performance. And if you don't have them, you're behind the eight ball because your competitors have them. 
but I really want to talk to you about what the key is to, to driving sales performance. So I'm going to ask, and this is a quiz and there's a reward. Don't take that, Tom. I'm going to talk about what is the key to driving performance, but before we get there, who is the key to driving performance in your sales organization? And with a show of hands, how many feel, and I know there's a lot of senior leaders here, how many feel it's the senior leader is the key driver for performance in the sales organization? Okay. So we got one. How many people feel it's the frontline sales manager, the folks who support your sales managers? Okay. We've got about a quarter. And how many people feel it's the sales rep? So let's just go back. How many people feel it's the frontline sales manager? Okay. So that's the key. And I'm going to tell you why it's the frontline sales manager. Okay. In this study of 103 uh, sales executives that were asked what the number one performance driver of sales performance was, overwhelmingly, 76% said it was the quality of frontline manager. Okay. Other areas came in close, sales training, compensation, reward, uh, development programs. But overwhelmingly, what we hear from CEOs is that their quality of sales manager is key to driving performance. In another study done by Forum Corporation, which looks at how sales forces sustain competitive advantage, it's a 2008 research report. And I have a whole bunch of research reports. All you need to do is email me, and I'll send you links. Uh, what they said is the sales manager directly influences many factors that drive performance, including helping sales reps think strategically. Okay, who are they targeting? How are they going to close the deal? They help reps by providing coaching and feedback to make them better. Okay, and they also, what they enhance, what Tibor talked about, was process. Who's the owner of process in the organization? Making sure that processes like performance management happen. Uh, that sales processes are followed through. All those factors are driven by your frontline sales manager. They make everything better. Again, out of the same study, what they found was a key differentiator between, as Tibor talked about, level three companies, which are you know, best in class companies, and level three, so one in three, is that sales management, strong sales management was a key differentiator between the top companies and the bottom companies. They also found the same link, okay? that the sales manager was critical for driving sales performance. The other finding, which I find fascinating, and we'll, we'll dig into a little bit more, is great sales managers are an untapped source of competitive advantage, because no one's taking advantage of what they can do within the organization, and we'll, we'll see why. But if you want to unleash the power of your organization, it starts with your frontline sales manager. Okay? So late last year, we decided to find out a little bit more about what's the state of training and development for frontline managers around the world. We conducted the Star Sales Manager, 2015 Star Sales Manager Survey. You're one of the first group to see this, and within the next week or two, you'll all get a copy of the final report. So we looked at four key skill areas. We looked at managing performance, hiring top sales performers, coaching, and business planning. What we saw is the respondents agreed or strongly agreed that these four skills were highly important responsibility of the sales manager. Okay. So we tested for that. Number two, we asked them a different question. We said, from your organization's perspective, how important are each of these key skills? And there were some differences. Okay. Managing performance and hiring top sales reps was high up there. What we saw was a drop off in coaching and business planning. So if we overlay the two, what we're seeing is a major gap, excuse me, in, in a couple areas. There's good alignment on the area of managing performance and hiring. They're both deemed important as a responsibility, as well as from an organizational perspective. What we see is a major drop off in coaching, in terms of how the organization views coaching, and a, a somewhat of a minor drop off in business planning. So we said, okay, let's understand how well companies are supporting their sales managers in these four critical areas. If I tell you the results are shocking, they might be. But, but what we're seeing, and, and this is, you know, again, respondents across companies, across industries, and across the world. We had every, every continent, there was people who were involved in the survey. And what we found, and I, I guess it's hard to say they were all under 50%, but pretty closely, <laughs> half the respondents said their companies do not provide ongoing sales training in these four key areas. That's a miss. 
uh, and Lorella will tell you that as well, right? I mean, that's a great miss, uh, you know, within the industry, and that's why we're talking to you folks. So we then overlaid, and we said, okay, forget the responsibility because all four came out really strong. Let's look at how organizations view the importance of these responsibilities or activities, and let's see how well they support them. And you know, I don't have to point out to you that there's a major disconnect in terms of the support given in terms of ongoing development in several key areas. Uh, you know, one being performance management, two being hiring, coaching, and, and I think there's a good reason why, and hopefully I'll explain it. Um, you know, there's a, there's a closer connection between the importance, but I think someone's missing the boat here. Uh, so there is a, a disjoint or disconnect between what organizations deem important, sales organizations deem important, and how they're supporting them. So, as I said to you, and, and, and I know there's agreement across almost every industry study I've read, that most CEOs and chief sales officers believe that the sales manager is key to driving performance. But this is what we're doing to them. We're tying their hands. We're not giving them the support they need. We're really letting them go out there to fail. And I know, as I talked about the 25 years, or at least the 13 years I spent in sales, I was not trained for one of my jobs. It was sink or swim, baby. Uh, unfortunately, I, I swam most of the time. So if you thought it could get any worse, guess what? It does. Now, in, in many cases, we promote our top sales rep into a, I didn't say anything funny yet. <laughs> okay. We promote our top sales rep into a sales manager role. You're a great rep, hey, we're gonna make you a sales manager. Well, look at this example. You know, here we have the best player in hockey, and given in Canada, I can present this because everybody knows who I'm talking about. Uh, yet, as a coach, he was mediocre. So here's what we're seeing the companies doing in terms of supporting new sales manager development. We asked them two questions. One, do you have a formal training process to support the development or the transition from a sales rep to a manager? And 40% agreed. There's other 60% assuming that there's a direct correlation between companies that are doing nothing for their frontline manager or their new frontline manager. And then we looked at, do you have a formal process to evaluate how all that transition is going? And it's even worse. Now, many of you here are in senior roles and you've probably rolled out sales management programs. And there's a problem with rolling out sales manager programs. They're different from rolling out rep training activities. And I'll tell you why. Most sales manager programs fail, okay? And there's four reasons why they fail. Number one, uh, I'm sure you've all seen this, but with training, most training dissipates within 30 days unless it's being reinforced. Who reinforces sales manager training? For the reps, it's the sales manager, right? Does the next level of management do a good job in that area of reinforcing the learnings? No? Okay, I agree. Uh, you know, we learn, and this applies against anything we do, and I'm not a learning expert. There's other people who are far better than that, but blended learning makes a difference. If you come to this lecture, apparently there's a 5% takeaway that you'll retain what I say. So hopefully you know what the key is, the sales manager. There'll be one other key. So what you want to do is you want to blend the learning. And if you look at what factor has the number one level of retention, it's teaching one-on-one, -on -one, which is coaching. It's one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you don't have that component in a training program, it's not going to work. Okay, here's one of the other issues and a common uh, thread is unless you benchmark, unless you benchmark where you're at prior to doing a training intervention, how do you know how you've done? You don't. So the key is, you know, when we do sales management training, we really need to know where are we at and then reassess to see how, go how good we've done. And the last area, uh, this poor sales manager, says, I don't know. Well, there's a lack of accountability in two factors. There's a lack of accountability on behalf of the sales manager to get better because he's not, no, no one's being tracked. And there's a lack of accountability for the VP or head of sales because they're not supporting it. Uh, I spoke to a, uh, an, I hope he's not watching this, but a CEO of a uh, pharmaceutical company. And we were talking about what's going to drive performance. And uh, he said, maybe it's coaching. He said, we just did a great coaching program. They loved it. I said, oh, OK. What are you doing to follow up? And there was silence. 
and maybe a little giggle. Uh, oh yeah, I guess we can recover it. So, you know, hey, if you want to invest in your sales managers, that's great. You got to do it right. So one of my takeaways I'm going to share with you is a very simple formula for how do you do it right. Okay? And it's a four-step process uh, which looks at, okay, let's say you're training to better coaches. Let's see how effective our coaches are right now. Let's benchmark, let's do some level of assessment. Number two, if you're going to do training, it's got to be blended. You've got to have various factors and waves to improve retention. If you're not doing that, it drops off very quickly. The third component is about reinforcement. Okay? You can have the next level of management reinforce sales manager training. You can use internal sources, or you can use external sources. In many cases, that's what I'll do. Or you can do both, which is very powerful. Right? Having both the sales manager and an external coach helping those learnings, because I can teach coaching in an hour and a half. But you know what? It takes six months to perfect step by step, nuance by nuance. So unless you have that, it's really spending money and not getting a return. Nobody wants to do that. And of course, the last step uh, is going back and reassessing. How have we done? Right? Simple question. Whatever we did prior, let's do a post-evaluation and see how we've done. The other component that I don't have on here is really providing tools. And everyone talked about tools. Bill talked about tools. Tibor talked about tools. How do you pull it through? How do you make coaching more effective? There's some great technology apps that people can use to do effective field visit reports. I have a couple that I'm going to share with you later on in the presentation, which are still manual or Excel-based. But the point is, they'll help your coaching improve. So again, I just want to make sure that everyone walks away with understanding my belief that the key to driving or unlocking performance in your sales organization is developing great frontline sales managers. Okay, So if the sales managers are key, what are the four key activities that they do is critical for driving sales performance? And I need to show a hands here. I need some participation. How many would say it's business planning is the key activity that sales managers do that drives performance? No one? Anyone want to take business planning? You were? No? OK. Uh, how about coaching? How many feel it's coaching is the key to driving performance? OK. How many feel it's hiring top performers? That's a good one. <laughs> Tough audience, eh? Uh, how many feel it's performance management? Okay. Okay, so most people say coaching. Who said coaching again? All right, I'm going to give my buddy Tom a key. Uh, and it's not to my house. Uh, so coaching is the key to driving performance. And I'm going to share not only my experience, but industry research that supports that. Okay, actually, uh, before that, let me just talk about the impact that coaching has in a very simple perspective. If you look at the bell curve of performance, right? Everyone's seen the bell curve of performance, where you've got your C players, which represent 15 to 20% of your sales force, your Bs that are 60% of your, your sales group, and your As that are your top 10 or 20%. What great sales coaches do, and uh, as Tibor talked about, they shift the curve. They make everybody better. And if you can shift the curve, guess what? You're getting closer to the full potential of your sales organization. So great coaches like um, Phil Jackson, he had the same talent. The talent pool didn't change. But he shifted the curve because of his coaching and his technique. So this is a summary of many of the industry studies. One company didn't want to let me share it, so I, uh, you, know, you can send me a note if you like. I can give you specifics. But sales reps that, per, that receive coaching significantly outperform those who don't. That's a fact. Okay? Many studies will tell you the impact of coaching, or effective coaching, moving from low effectiveness to high effectiveness, is 15 to 20%. In a large sales force, that's a breakthrough. If you can get 15% more sales or 20% more sales, there's no other initiative that will do that for you. If you look at the other impact, we know that highly engaged sales forces create highly engaged customers, which deliver more sales and profits. Coaching improves sales rep engagement. It also reduces turnover. And in the CSO study, so I think the biggest thing that we could do to manage performance is to really stimulate execution is to have them on the metrics. 
The problem that a lot of times happens is that sales leaders want. tend to use so metrics to measure critical. people. These are four people factors that will because they all buy into that. But whole, here's the whole problem with coaching. It gets measured, as all of you know, and, so on. and I know so when I was in industry, I was not a great coach. Me, Tom, Tom, that so now that. there's nowhere to hide when they introduce the metrics mechanism. So the other tool that you're going to be able to take advantage of after the event uh, is, why is what I call the metrics very execution tool. It's very difficult skill to get good at. Um, and what it allows you to do is really get, the really get the reps to take ownership of their own metrics. It's relatively simple. You put what in their annual do, target, put in their average deal size, think. and right away there's a requirement that they know the what their proposal part. to close ratio is, what their discovery to proposal it ratio, and what their time. initial meeting right? to so actual discovery. To success, and then you can work with them because what you'll see is if you work with them on a simple thing, I find myself doing that too. Right, and it's not about the average that, deal side by you know, five thousand dollars. As you, know, you, you can see, it changes the, the, the level of activity, the level of resources that they'll require. They and if you can get them okay. to commit to maybe improving the formal process, their discovery to proposal by five uh, by ten percent to fifty five percent, again, what it does is change the level of work and so forth and so on. So what this is great for is not to measure, but I always recommend that have the reps they own this. Manager. If they own their numbers, they're not going to manage them, and you're going to benefit as a result. And then you can focus on their performance uh, management to, their team. to develop a continuous and the improvement challenge also flow. is there's a lack of tools. So again, this will be one of the things that so you'll be getting. So this is the last question we asked in the Star Sales Manager survey. We said. Sales leaders around the world, tell us. Now, the last thing that I'll touch on is accountability because I think, again, one of the great things that I took away from the basketball the coach way back when is, performance is that it's great that he helped us manage our performance and he took us to higher levels. But I think what he instilled in us is this a accountability. A little over a quarter said the first thing I would suggest to you is accountability. Oh my God, you're missing the boat here. I've sat with a lot of sales leaders and they talk about accountability and they really are looking at it. So I want to provide you. What is the team accountable to me as opposed to what's my accountability for that team's success? So it has to be a two-way street, because if it's not, really then you're going to end tools. up with, in what's commonly known if I as the accountability you, what is the sales paradox. The more that you try to make them accountable, the have. less likely they, they are say? to become accountable. So what I would suggest Hi, you put a focus right on. on through your frontline managers, managers is that individual personal you, accountability. You were a sales manager, the more I'm accountable for my success, how much time the more interest I'm going to take. And if we go back to the basketball story, the more that I'm One. going to be involved in the Rock. why and the how, and the less I'll be focused uh, on what okay. it is that I have to most do to of achieve us that, because I'm willing to achieve things that mean things to me. Drive and again, one, the other way, as I mentioned, to meetings, have busy answering accountability emails, is to actually have them own their right? execution of the process, so we've a very simple have their own, own their own that, metrics, and as a result of that, you'll find that they're as engaged an Excel as you want them to be in generally performing at a much higher but level. Simply, at the end of the day, is you list your reps. And again, I can't emphasize enough that the best way to do that is to lead by example. If you want it to be accountable to you, demonstrate to them how you're going to be accountable to them. You then rank your reps, because we want to know so to who are your A's off, and who are your B's, again, and the only way to do that is to I think having a process is not enough. And then it needs to be an evolving process, so even if you're doing at it annually, I would argue spend, you're behind the eight ball if you look at events out there in the field. Right? And perfection. you're going to be getting the 360 degree deal view to help you, ups, you can evolve and continuously keep up with the market and understand why things are turning out the way they are. And then we have the metrics are a means to change as opposed to a means to measurement. And the quicker goes. you get your salespeople believing that it's there to help them as opposed to measure them, the quicker they're going to adopt it and take advantage of it. And again, you'll be getting the uh, metrics Another execution tool. That, tool. Uh, that and lastly, accountability. You, again, I use in my it's part of every practice, sales but conversation, my but you really got to give it some teeth if you want to yield some results. The only folks that use this are my clients. Thank you very much. It's tough to get managers to do it. We're looking at coaching. One of the key steps in coaching is getting the rep to commit to change and growth. And that's always a challenge. It's not me telling you, Nathan, that you've got to improve your closing. If I tell you that, you think it's OK. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so what we try to do is basically do four things when we're building a development plan. Number one question is, what is the key area that you're committed to working on that will positively impact your performance? Okay, it's you, it's not me. Okay, and we're listing, looking for one or two. If as a coach you can move a sales rep in one or two areas in a year, it's all subtle, but you're gonna see a major impact on performance shift. Okay, we also wanna understand why. The reason why we wanna understand why is we can't motivate people, but if we understand why they're motivated, maybe we can tap into that. And that takes a little bit of facilitation to get people to really illustrate the why. Uh, and then how, how is always difficult because, hey, you know, if I want to improve on closing, I'm going to try to close on each call. Um, you know, I'm going to have some closing lines. 
uh, or I'll never be closing, but building relationships. Uh, and then the last one is putting a timestamp to it. So this is very simple to go out to all your sales reps and have the sales manager facilitate a process where a contract is signed. So along these lines, I, I want to share with you one of the most powerful slides that I, that I refer to all the time. It's done by the American Society of Training and Development. Okay? And what it says, as Nathan and I said, you should be better at closing. Right? So you hear the idea, what's the likelihood of you doing it? Ten percent. If I get Nathan to want to agree that it's truly an area he wants to work on, and he writes it down to a plan or a piece of paper like the one I showed you, okay, uh, there's a five-fold chance that he's going to get better. He's going to achieve that goal. So goal planning, coaching, development are all similar. Okay, if he writes it down and he commits to me as his coach, and we set up a follow-up appointment, it might not happen the first time. But over time, that goal will be achieved. So that is the power. When, we talk, when each of us talk about performance, accountability is a thread that runs through all portions of the organization. So here's your to-do list. Not that I'm telling you what to do. But uh, you know, part of what my partners and I said is we want people to leave with some good ideas. They can go out and get performance going today. OK, so I'll, I'll share a to-do list with you. Number one, if you're a sales manager and you have reps, Get out and coach for the next two months. Don't spend any time in the office. If you're a leader, get your sales managers out coaching. Have your sales managers develop, or you develop, a coaching plan of how much time you tend to spend with your reps from April to December. Set up a coaching plan or a development plan with each of your reps so you have a joint commitment in terms of what you're going to be coaching. And the last component is it requires accountability, which means there's an accountability between you and your sales rep to help move them forward and grow. But there's also an accountability at the top, if you're at the top, to make sure that your people are out coaching and maybe even coach them. So again, I just want to reinforce sales managers are key. Okay? The key to driving performance is coaching. It's, a, it's an untapped source of competitive advantage. So if you guys are all sold and say, hey, last slide. I like what Steven's saying. I want to create a high-performance coaching culture. What do I do? And Tim's going to talk to you about culture. He's the expert in culture. There's five paradigm shifts you need to make as a sales leader. Number one, coaching starts at the top. Okay? If you're not coaching, if you're not supporting coaching, as they say on Francais, forget about it. Number two, it requires a mindset shift within the organization of telling people what to do instead of asking and facilitating. Number three, all levels need to take accountability for coaching. It's got to start at the top, but it's got to work its way down through the organization. Number four, and I want to expand upon this one, because I know there's tons of pressure to deliver numbers, right? Quarterly numbers. So what happens? You go back to the office, and you, for the first three months, you've got a coaching, you're building your coaching culture. Then the next quarter, you get a call you're short on sales. What do you do? You fall back and you tell them, get out there and make the sales happen. Right? We fall back into the trap. And we never get there. And really, the last component for me, uh, I believe that if companies are not investing in their frontline managers, they're doing disjustice to their sales organization. And that's a mindset shift where most CEOs know that, but don't put their money where their mouth is. So thank you. And uh, I'll take any questions.